Hello everyone, um, I know it's been a while since my last update, but I've been working hard at this game and I actually made a bunch of changes and um, <clears throat> I want to go through some of the you know main points and also talk about the biggest problem I've had which was you know fixing the networking lag that I was having so first of all I created this um, you know I, I improved the room entry where you can set your settings so you know maximum players how much score is needed to win the game and two map types which you know more can be added later but you know the second map right now is just slightly bigger one and um, there's also the settings menu that you can access even in the game and in game you can change your mouse sensitivity you can actually change your resolution you know make it full screen or not choose a different resolution here and um, also there is the uh, controls here which I am not exactly sure why the it, it's not being able to we're like we're not able to see the whole thing but it is it works like when you're on um on the actual build but basically what else I have done is once you enter the room now you see the players here if there's more players here um, we'll be able to see them as well actually I can uh, quickly do this here we go when um, when I enter the second room, um, now both players are here. So one thing to note is your own name will always be at the top. So for this screen, the player two is at the top, and for the main screen is player one. And you know it's telling you to press R to you know be ready. And we can once we're both ready, the game's gonna start. So it's gonna be a second cooldown, and then the game starting. I made this announcement system, which I think is, works quite neatly, where um I can send announcements to every client through RPC calls. And another thing I did is instead of writing the states here, um, I made these nice, you know, icons. So we're at the bomb state now. We can also be in the building state. This is if you can fly, which is now only open when you're dead. But, you know, in the future, I might make some power up. And this is when you're dead. Um, another thing to note is um, I can actually still change my settings here. So, for example, I can change my resolution while running the game and then hop back. This closes the game, so we're not going to use that here. I made this also the skills bar UI, which also is going to be quite different, I think, in the final game, because in the final game, I'm thinking about having power-ups, maybe things that you can only use once. Uh, but for now, if you throw a bomb, you can, you know, track the cooldown here. Same with the big bomb or the launcher. We can track the cooldowns here. And um, also in the final game, you will only be able to place a certain number of blocks and you'll able, you will be able to pick more blocks up to place but now it's infinite so that's not very you know that that's not useful for anything but i also put a little cooldown to placing blocks so you can just like spam it and other than that you know if as you can see on the two screens the movement is not jittery anymore and it's quite uh smooth i mean just lag there which is ironic but um i would say it works quite nice because i have been a lot of issues with laggy movement which is actually the the, the the thing that took most of my time actually um and uh, here i'm actually going to show some short videos of what i mean by the laggy movement And um, basically, to fix the laggy movement, okay, so there's not enough players, the game is going to end. I mean, we can also restart the lobby, by the way. And this also works if there's multiple people. And um, you can you can leave, rejoin, and all that. But basically, for the movement, um, I have tried everything possible. I have tried the Transform View Classic. I have tried to Transform View without the Classic. I have tried writing my own Transform View. And um, this is basically the what the Transform View Classic does kind of the same thing. So when you make a script, you just need to get, uh, you know, get reference from the IPAN observable. And then what I was doing was I was getting the position of the rigid body here, the rotation velocity, and I was applying them here. But the issue is um, this, there's like no compensation here. And what I mean by that is the game runs 60 FPS, right? Like, so there's 60 frames a second, but you're not sending data 60, 60 times a second. And what I mean by that is, 
it's these two values that are important. So this is how many times you send data, and this is how many times a second that data is like, you know, serialized. So these are the default values right now, which is what I try to keep. If I actually bump both of these up to 60, so match the frame rate, the game runs flawlessly, even with the old horrible method. But the problem is you're sending and serializing so much data that the game starts lagging when there's like four or five people. And that's just not a good idea because if you think about it, every client is sending every other client, you know, magnitudes more data and all of that data is being serialized magnitudes more. So, you know, especially as the number of players increase, that's gonna, you know, basically not work. And no matter what system I tried, I couldn't get rid of that jittery movement, no matter what kind of compens like, you know, lag compensation I used. But then I found a solution, which I believe it's related to the fact that I have a rigid body that I'm moving my player with. Because the thing is, all these transform view classics are concerned with the movement of the transform and not the rigid body. So this script, which I found online, but I tweaked it a little bit for my own, you know, needs, works flawlessly for me and I'm so happy. So basically, we're going to set these values to the standard one. Um, I That's the which was the goal, to have a smooth game without bumping these up. And what we're doing is we're, you know, sending the rigid body data, position, rotation, velocity, and we're also setting them here. And, um, you know, this is just pretty standard, like just calculating the difference and setting it, you know, accounting for like, etc. And then in the original script, they were just a move towards and rotate towards, which is, I guess, more so linear. But whereas like lerping is like more smoother, at least in my experience, I had these variables called smooth position and smooth rotation, which five worked for me. But, you know, I, I assume depending on the speed of your objects might be different, but I'm just lerping my speed and rotation instead of just using these methods. And it works so good. Like I'm so happy about this change because now um, with these low values, I can still have a smooth game. And one more thing I want to note is when I started using this, I realized when my game started. So when I would teleport from the starting zone to the actual play zone, players wouldn't follow. And I realized that's because I need a teleportation system. And what I mean by that is you'll, you'll see this option here where you know if distance is greater than whatever this value is teleport, which was lacking in my own one so i edited it and it's actually quite simple so what i did it was i just said i just set this bool teleported far and the distance and so i am lerping but i also said that if the distance of the rigid body's current position and the network position so that the position that we get from the network is greater than the teleporting distance i just instantly set it instead of lerping it so this this means that if there's some large movement like you know moving hundreds of units when i'm teleporting it just sets it right away so now that works really well and I'm really happy about it. And I'm for me in the next, you know, upcoming days, updates, now I'll actually start to do some of the more fun stuff. So my goals are to add sound effects, to add power-ups, maybe different types of bombs, maybe different types of maps. And um, yeah, like I know this update's been a long time and you might be thinking, wow, this is not many updates, but getting this figured out took me a really long time. So, but I'm really happy about the progress. But anyways, um, thanks for watching.